Welcome to the first creative vlog, my friends. I'm Anna Anastasia, and this channel is about my true passions, which is slow art and crafts, all types of crafts. You probably know me from my first channel, which is about minimalism, mindfulness, high sensitivity, and simple living. And I felt like I needed a new outlet creative outlet for a big chunk of my identity that I thought was not always a great fit for the first channel, so I created this one. I am self-taught in everything. I never attended or finished any art schools or special courses. I just went to a crafting club for girls when I was eight or nine years old, but that's it. <laughs> I'm not a perfectionist, I'm definitely a multipotentialite with numerous creative hobbies and passions. And here I want to show you my current processes to chat, to create easy to follow tutorials and simply build a safe space for everyone who is aesthetically curious, who loves to be inspired and is not against longer types of videos that are such a great company and a cozy night. So in today's vlog, I will show you my current craft projects. I will chat about art philosophy, in particular AI art. I've been currently very triggered by this topic, so I just want to discuss it. I will also show you how to make a simple necklace like this without any special tools. And we'll also have some fun with collaging and maybe something else. <laughs> I don't know yet. So I hope you will enjoy. It's the fifth day of crocheting a pillowcase. I took a YouTube tutorial as a base, but then decided to change it a bit. I have no idea how it will work. Maybe it will be too big and it won't be perfect, but we'll see. I haven't blocked the details yet. I won't wash them, I will just iron through a wet cloth and let dry. I made a few mistakes crocheting this, but learned some lessons as well. For example, I was too lazy to master the seamless granny square technique and just went with a traditional like chain method. And as the result, the seam is actually visible. Next time, I'll make it work better. The yarn is super soft. It's a Turkish yarn for amigurumi. It's a blend of cotton and acrylic. I didn't have a huge choice of materials when I decided to start this project and I just wanted to begin right away, so this was the only more or less decent variant that I found in a nearby tiny yarn store. And by the way, I'm not a yarn snob. I don't find it tacky to use affordable and accessible yarn. For example, recently I've been searching for a very particular cheap type of yarn to start crocheting a cardigan for Brian and then for me. And um, I couldn't find a good variant around the neighborhood where we live now, but I found a yarn store in the downtown of Belgrade. I'm still figuring out the hobby supply situation in Belgrade, so I was excited to explore the new store. And it turned out to be a store with pretty exclusive and expensive yarn. And as a disclaimer, I still got a skein of sock yarn. You can see it here, actually, like in the background. I began uh, knitting yoga socks. So when I asked the seller about the particular yarn, I was looking
their coconut shell buttons and I adore them. Oi. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I bought them when I was still in Russia. So let's attend. I initially wanted something more muted in terms of colors, but this sort of Greek-inspired combo looks great, I think. These are my recently finished projects, fingerless mittens for me and for Brian. I knitted the ones for me first, as it was the first time when I made the items like this and I still had some mistakes, you see like some holes and inconsistencies, but still um, I'm happy with them and I will wear them of course. It's merino wool 100% with super wash finishing, which makes it very easy to care. So I made them super long and these ones that I made for Brian. Yeah, it's very, very beautiful blue color with some speckles of red here. You see, it's, it's better. I kind of mustered it. After I blocked them, they became even softer and very, very pleasant to skin. The merino wool is absolutely not itchy, so I'm pretty happy with it. I'm also in the process of knitting Brian a hat from the same yarn, but I ran out of it, so I need like an extra skin of wool. Recently, I've watched a very thought-provoking, interesting video about artificial intelligence and art, where to draw the line. I will leave the link in the description section if you're interested. There, a very well-spoken and a thoughtful person, an artist, is talking about why we appreciate art created by humans, why we, we value man-made objects, why we admire the paintings of old masters, why we are so drawn to 
history to antiques and so on and he comes to conclusion that it's about humanity it's about the special meaning that is created it's the connection that is translated in the item created by a human for a human i remember the moment when i first saw the um, artworks created by artificial intelligence and of course many of them are horrible like they look like the ones that <laughs> you can the, the images there look like the ones that you might have in your nightmares so i just want to unsee them but many were very elaborate and very creative in a way and interesting but there was something very peculiar about them that made me feel very very uncomfortable there is uh, such a term as uncanny valley effect in a nutshell it is used to describe humanoid objects that imperfectly resemble actual human beings and provoke uncanny or strangely familiar feelings of uneasiness and repulsion in observers the term was first coined by a Japanese roboticist Masahiro Mori in 1970. And it seems like uh, that's exactly what happens when I personally, and maybe you too, so let me know in the comments, look at the uh, art piece created by artificial intelligence. Yeah, uh, but back to getting back to the video, the author then continues to discuss the relationship between a human and an art object. He talks about the stealing identity of an author, about forgers, and he makes a perfect point by saying that artificial intelligence kind of steals the creative identity of humans. And it's not right. It's just not right. It's not art. It's, it's forgery yeah it's a very interesting topic that made me think a lot and i'm pretty much convinced that as soon as and as long as we appreciate connections between humans as long as we value the warmth of our hands and the hands of others that create things we as long as we appreciate the light of the new idea all the human creatives authors musicians artists crafters artisans just all of them they will continue be valued i just want to believe this i don't know what do you think now YouTube is suggesting me similar videos and I watched one more. It's also great and thoughtful and I and I open it in a scary way. We are entering a very interesting era of art with the overall desire to create faster and more. I don't think it's contributing to humanity in the best way. Time will tell, of course. And again, the world needs balance and in contrast to fast AI-aided art, the slow type of art, which I stand for, will become even more relevant than now, I believe. I just came back from the store and I couldn't resist getting things there. It's um, a chain store. It's called Lidl. It's mostly like produce and all things for home. But today they had a huge arrival of all kinds of hobby supplies. So yeah, that's what I got. I got knitting needles bamboo ones uh, and i needed them anyway so i'm not feeling bad for getting many things so i got also these needles um, i have like, thinner ones and i needed needles for chunkier yarn and i also of knitting supplies. I never had those markers. I used 
regular safety pins or just yarn of contrasting color and I have no idea how to use the um, what is called row counters I have no idea how to use them but I think I will learn there are hooks I didn't have these small sized hooks and I wanted to try to crochet lace so it will be super useful and bigger hooks I made a bamboo very very cute and also a huge pack of colored paper I will use it for collages for different types of textures and layers and I don't know maybe I will try to do something like this of course not not the rest but this kind of art I've never done that before it will be super interesting to try the colors are really nice of course they're like super bright like neon colors that I don't usually use but it will be interesting to experiment after all so that was my haul and for everything I paid let me think like around ten dollars all of it so I think it's a very good price for this value So today I want to show you how I have fun with small collaging formats. So here we have a square piece of watercolor paper. It's three inch by three inch. And I have two types of different scissors, regular glue, and an auto it can, where I selected just random images from all types of old books and magazines that I had at home. So I have no idea what it will be. I just picked the images that I thought could be interesting to combine. I don't have to necessarily use all of them, but the selection process will be live. <laughs> so, apart from all the tools, I have complete absence of inner judgment <laughs> or critique because it's crucial. So, let's see what will happen now. I'm a devoted fan of collaging, both digital and analog. They bear different attitudes for me. My digital ones are more macabre, while analog can bear more fun elements. 
Sometimes I just like to choose random photos and arrange them into something. It's a purely intuitive process. Collaging has a very distinct philosophy. You combine the usually uncombinable and find interesting relations between completely unrelated objects to create something with a new meaning. So this is what I've come up with today. If you got inspired, I invite you to try the small collaging format. You can use any type of like visual materials that you have. It can be pictures from shop catalogs, from old magazines or newspapers or old photos or books if you have. Just don't be afraid to experiment and it can be fun and pretty storytelling. What do you think? About two years ago, I got very interested in making my own jewelry. So I would create various gemstone natural gemstone necklaces, and bracelets, and I would even sell some of them. Even I sold one bracelet on Etsy before it was banned in Russia. But after I left the country, I didn't take all my jewelry making tools and supplies. So I just left them in my parents' apartment. And now my niece is occasionally using them, which makes me very happy. But my passion has never gone away completely. And just a week ago, I luckily discovered a pretty modest but still very, very exciting small shop with all kinds of beads and jewelry making findings. And then I thought, why not making a new necklace for me and why not showing you the process, how I create those kinds of necklaces. So this is what I got. It's just a simple jasper type beads, one strand. So you will basically need any type of beads, wooden beads, glass beads, natural gemstone beads, anything. You just need a sufficient amount to wrap around your neck 
with a desired degree of tightness. I like my necklaces be slightly looser than the choker format. So you will need that amount of beads plus three extra. I think I will have five extra, it's so it's fine. So at least uh, as soon as you have like three, you're good. Then you will need a cord. I have very simple cord here. It's nylon one, I guess. And it has 0 0.9 millimeter diameter. And just make sure that the diameter of the cord, like the, um, the thickness of the cord, is slightly smaller than the bead hole diameter. In my beads, I have the diameter around one millimeter. So this cord, which is 0 0.9 millimeter, is just perfect. Then you will need a simple sewing needle, but you'd better choose like a very thin one. So I have, I don't know whether you can see it, a thin needle with just basic thread. And you will need scissors and a lighter to trim the ends. And this is it. So the most creative part is now to assemble the beads in the desired order because you can have different types of them. So I think I will try to arrange them in a certain order. Maybe from dark to light or something else. <laughs> so let's see. I don't have a special plate for beads, so I'm using my handmade doily and it's pretty handy. You can use any type of cloth that isn't smooth enough just to keep the beads in place. So something like this. And now I'm taking the cord. Do not cut the cord yet. Just string them as it is while it's still attached to the main thing. My cord easily goes through the bead hole, but if you have some troubles, you can use the easy needle and thread technique. I will show it to you right now. So here, here is our needle and thread. It's with a knot. So what do you do? Just follow me. and carefully pull it through. Here you go. So this is it. Try it around your neck once again to make sure that the length is enough. Do not cut the cord just yet. Then wrap it around your head in its widest part to make sure it 
goes through and leave additional around like five inches of cord for adjustment and only then cut the cord yeah i need to add maybe a couple of more beads the gradient effect is not that perfect now but it's fine okay now according to my measurements i'm cutting the cord right here it's better to leave more cord because you can always trim it after and anyway our necklace will be a transformer one even it out like the the string of beads to center it like this okay these are our extra beads that we will need a bit later now carefully tie knots on each end to keep the strand of beads in place the first one is always pretty easy but the second one can be challenging just make sure it's tight enough so watch me do this sure that you can see but it's just usual ordinary knots yeah here you see here and here now you need to take one bead one of the extra I think I will use this one and put both strands of cord through it like this so the first one will go through pretty seamlessly but for the second one you will need the needle and thread we are using the same technique just take the bead with one strand of cord I like to hold it like this then carefully put the needle through the bead without touching the cord and put the other strand through the loop oh yeah. <laughs> I lost it yeah like this here and carefully very very carefully because the thread can break very carefully pull it through it's the most important part <laughs> that does that can take some effort so don't be discouraged ah you see it broke okay if it breaks just tie another knot I will need to adjust it to make the loop it happens also if it will happen again maybe I will try another bead because some of the beads from the same parcel they can have different slightly different openings just make sure the knot here doesn't create extra bulkiness putting ok 
Okay, let's try once again. Here, this is our closure. You see, this is how it works. And now, just to fix it, you can just tie knots here, but I prefer to have beads on the ends. Just tie a simple knot. And the second one. Make sure they are equal length. But anyway, you can always trim if you left enough cord for adjustment. Yeah, this is it. It's almost ready. We just need one extra action. I decided to make the ends a bit shorter. Always try it once again to make sure that everything is good and I think everything is good in my case so what the final action involves the lighter what you need to do just take those beads on the ends take the cord just carefully Cut it off. I hope it will focus. My camera. No, it cannot focus. Okay, <laughs> like this, it focuses. Just to leave a little bit of cord in the end. Like this. Here. You see? And now be very, very careful. This is it. Yeah, now it's trimmed. Very neat. And repeat on the other end. Be very careful to light only that loose end. Yeah, this is it, and your necklace is ready. That's it for today. Thank you so much for spending this time with me. Let me know in the comments whether you liked this format and would like to see more of this. And maybe you've tried collaging or making a necklace, or there are other projects that you are finishing now that would be exciting to know. Stay creative and let the inspiration in. Пока-пока!